Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In this video, we will learn the basics uh, about continuous time and discrete time signals, and we will also solve uh, n chapter problems 1.1. 1 .1. So, we will be discussing the two main types of signals <coughs> that is, continuous time or CT signal and the discrete time or DT signal. Now, what is continuous time? We have heard the term continuous, but continuous time means this is the time axis and this is the magnitude axis. So the time axis is continuous. That means there is no break. And since time axis is continuous, therefore the signal can be viewed at any point of time like 0 0.001, 0 0.002, every point there is a signal and so this type of a signal will be called continuous time signal and it is represented by xt t is for the um, continuous time and then the discrete time if we have the time axis in such a way that we take a signal at 0, 0, 0.0 and then we take another signal or another sample at let's say 1 millisecond, then 2 millisecond, then 3 millisecond. So this is now discontinuous or discrete. So we will have, there is no value between let's say this point. Or we have not got any sample between this point. So this type of signal will be called discrete time signal and to distinguish it is represented by x and n in bracket the axis from t has been changed to n to represent numbers and in your book you will find uh, uh, many of the signals represented by something like this dots so this is uh, also a discrete time signal Now let's recall that what we have learned in circuit, uh, what is how we define a complex number. A complex number Z can also be written in polar form or exponential form. So this is polar when the signal is written as the magnitude R. Let's say this is the representation of the signal. This is the magnitude R and this is the angle with the x-axis phi. So this is in polar form, magnitude and angle. This could also be written as a complex number e raised to the power. So magnitude remains same. Angle theta can be written as e raised to the power j phi. Sorry, not phi theta, but phi. Where r is the magnitude of z and phi is the phase angle. Now, Z or the complex number can be represented in three forms. One is Z is equal to X plus J Y. Now, look here, this is the X axis and this is Y axis. So, it is X plus J Y. This is a rectangular form. It can also be represented since X can is representing R cosine phi and Y is representing R sine phi. Therefore, this will see that this can be represented as R cosine phi plus J sine phi. So this is rectangular form, polar form we have already seen here and the exponential form is e raised to the power J phi. This is what I was talking that E J phi can be represented as cos phi plus J sine phi. This is also known as Euler's formula. So according to Euler's formula, uh, we can write this. So this is the question that we want to solve. 1.1 uh, express each of the following complex numbers in Cartesian form that is x plus j y form. And for this uh, uh, we'll just uh, learn the background a little bit. This is the formula that we'll be using the Euler formula. And as I mentioned, actually cos theta or cos phi represents the real axis and sin phi represents the imaginary axis. 
and if we have um, a magnitude r, then it will become r e j phi polar form, then r cos phi plus j sin phi, the rectangular or Cartesian form, and if you open the bracket, then it will be of this form. So all these three can be used. We are going to convert the complex, which is generally of this form, into these forms. So let's see the first question half e j phi so this is half e j phi according to this formula we can write half is now our r bracket cos phi phi is this angle uh, pi so cos pi plus j sin pi and if you use your calculator you can find the value of uh, cos pi to be minus 1 and sin pi to be 0 so the final answer is half. So this is the Cartesian uh, value. Let's see the next one. Same question except for a minus sign. So we'll just put minus sign with all the angles here. And again get the value from the calculator. So in this case also the value is minus half. And now we'll, we'll uh, solve all the others but uh, just a point here to, uh, to clarify that I hope you know that the angle this is the starting point 0 then we have 90 degree 180 degree 270 degree and 360 or 2 pi if you go in the negative direction it will be minus 90 minus 180 minus 270 and minus 360 this table if you remember in from your um, metric or intermediate day uh, these values we use or uh, we'll, we can use uh, for sine similarly for cosine it just you uh, reverse this you write 1 here and then write 3 by 2 here 1 over under root 2 1 over half and 0 so you get the sine and cosine values from here however since uh, we are using calculator so you don't have to really bother about this so let's proceed to the next question the next question is e j pi by 2 just plug in the value in this equation so pi by 2 pi by 2 using calculator cos pi by 2 is 0 sin pi by 2 is minus 1 so our answer will be j1 or simply j this is minus same question minus sign so we just plug in the minus signs and find the answer which is equal to minus j1 or simply minus j ej5 pi by 2 again we plug in and cos and phi you can use your calculator directly from here but if you are solving on paper it is better that you simplify this so 5 pi by 2 can be written as simply pi by 2 uh, just to remember that if we add 360 degree or 2 pi or subtract 360 degree or 2 pi from any angle the values does not change the values remain same so what we have done here actually we have subtracted 2 pi uh, 2 pi from here and 2 pi from here so we get cos pi by 2 sine pi by 2 and then calculate the value using the calculator so this is a better way so your teacher knows that you have not copied and you are following the steps now in this case r is under root 2 so we we'll, we'll take this r under root 2 and in bracket we put the values of the angle and solve using calculator you can either use get this value from this table 45 degree is pi by 4 so 1 over under root 2 here also 1 over under root 2 and is equal to uh, simplifying you get the answer 1 plus j you can also use calculator directly and you can find this value 0 0.707 for cos pi by 4 and again 0 0.707 uh, for sine pi by 4 the answer will remain same and then the last part we have this value here 
under root 2 j 9 pi by 4 plugging in the value here also we are subtracting 2 pi so what is left is pi by 4 and pi by 4 using our calculator calculate the value this one is same except for the minus sign following same procedure we get the answer 1 minus j and finally we have under root 2 e raised to the power minus j pi by 4 no change in the procedure same procedure using calculator you can find 1 minus j so i hope this uh, gives you an understanding how you can solve uh, this type of problem simply by following the procedures thank you